Let's talk about the biggest barrier to recovery and actual healing, and that is stress and the activation of the flight or fight mechanism. It's called the sympathetic nervous system, and a person is in sympathetic dominance, and you have high levels of cortisol and high levels of adrenaline, both produced by the adrenal gland. The activation of the sympathetic nervous system and the activation of cortisol really wasn't designed to go more than 90 seconds. The problem is nowadays, it's just all day long. Our environments, our life is filled with things that keep us in stress mode. When the body is in flight or fight, it's preparing for emergency survival, running away from something, or fighting. And you will not heal 100% if you're in this mode. Many people have the switch turned on and they just can't turn it off. And this prevents the sleep, which has an entire cascade of additional things that can happen. I did a whole video on that. It also will release glucose, okay? Your body has a stored uh, glucose as glycogen. It's gonna release glucose when you have high levels of cortisol. I mean, even another name for cortisol is glucocorticoid. It's a glucose controlling hormone and it will activate insulin. That's why uh, a lot of times people become diabetic when they have stress for too long. So you're not gonna be able to recover, your digestion's not gonna work that well. The speed of wound healing is less. You'll retain sodium and you'll dump potassium. The more stress you have, the more that you just will lose potassium. Chronic stress destroys something in your brain called the hippocampus. And the hippocampus has to do with memory, learning, and locating yourself in time and space. So you're like, okay, what did I do with those keys? Where did I park? You're studying something, but it's just not quite going in. It could be from the stress affecting this brain structure. Also, stress is the main activator for disease and especially infection. It's almost impossible to get sick if you're stress-free. It's virtually impossible to have a disease if you don't have any stress. You take a look at anyone who had a disease or an infection, and they had stress right before that happening. Chronic stress then causes cortisol to be resistant. Very similar to insulin resistance, you can have cortisol resistance. So your body's pumping out more cortisol, but it's not really working. And because cortisol is an anti-inflammatory, that function doesn't work anymore, and you just become one big ball of inflammation. Being in the flight or fight mode too long can increase your risk of heart attacks, and it can even cause a loss of bone formation. I had a patient, when I was in practice, come in the office, and um, she was postmenopausal. She, her entire spine collapsed, where she, now she's like a hunchback, and the bones are literally caved in on each other. It was really, really weird. So I sent her out to get tested and her cortisol was off the charts. So cortisol can definitely affect bone formation as well as cause a loss of collagen formation. Now, what part of your body is collagen? Ligament, tendons, and cartilage. So your joints. So the joints become a big problem. Plus they're gonna be inflamed. But other than that, you're gonna be good to go. And the biggest symptom to know if you're in this situation is to look at your tolerance to stress. You may find that you have a great difficulty in babysitting like five kids for more than eight hours. That might get on your nerves. You have low patience for very slow drivers in front of you, but it is your ability to have patience, which is the best indicator for strength of your adrenal gland. Your ability to be calm in chaos. That would be a very strong adrenal. All right, so here are a few things you can do. The more stress that you have, the more you're in flight or fight, the more you should exercise. This is a really good therapy for a lot of people. Walking, hardcore exercise, just more exercise. Of course, diet. We're talking about healthy keto. We're talking about fasting. It's very, very important. Acupressure. I put some links down below. That will really put you in a state of relaxation. B1, the most important nutrient to take for this condition. Nutritional yeast, take a lot of it. Potassium, very, very important. It's a physiological relaxer. It calms the nervous system down. Magnesium, very important. And then we have breathing. There's a great technique 
to actually affect your um, nervous system. So when someone's in a state of stress, they breathe like this. <sighs> Their exhalation is very fast or shortened. So what you want to do is you want to breathe in slowly and breathe out slowly at the same rate, whether it's three or four seconds in, it's going to be probably four or five seconds in, and then four or five seconds out. If you practice that, you, it'll actually pull you out of the flight or fight mechanism. Vacation. That is very, very therapeutic. You need to find a desert island where you can go by yourself for three months. I actually said that in another video, and a lady that I met recently told me she heard that advice, and she did go on a vacation for two months in Italy, and she lost all this weight, and she did great. So this is very good therapy if you can do it. Don't take things so serious. People that are in stress mode are very, very serious. You need to be the opposite of serious. You need to be playful. You need to be carefree. You need to be relaxed. You need to pull yourself out of this uh, excessive worry and thinking and analyzing and solving problems 24 seven. Anyway, I have some additional videos that you definitely need to check out on stress on this page. Check it out.